Is there no other way, truly? Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down and analyzing the situation that Mike and Werner got themselves into during the season 4 finale of Better Call Saul. Major warning of spoilers for everything in the show up to the season 4 finale and a let's jump right into this. So when the finale aired, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do an overall reaction video to it or what. I didn't want to randomly review the finale since I haven't reviewed every other individual episode of this season, so I decided to collect my thoughts and divide them into separate discussions. As I've already said, today I'll be focusing on Mike and Werner, but in the future I'll be tackling other topics from the season 4 finale such as Jimmy getting the name Saul Goodman, along with other discussion topics from season 4 in general such is how Howard is holding up. Anyways, let's quit beating around the bush, let's talk about the tragedy that is Werner. Going into the episode, I didn't want to feel sorry for Werner, but I couldn't help myself. I could tell that they were building him up to be a likable screw up, but we all knew that he would eventually screw up badly enough for Gus and Mike to be forced to make a difficult decision as the season 4 finale synopsis implied. I just can't believe that Werner actually thought that he'd be able to return to work with nothing more than a slap on the wrist. Werner was given multiple warnings by Mike, and he said he understood, although he never truly did. Him blabbing on about the construction project to the people at Mike's bar was his one and only warning, but he was just never going to fully get it. They introduced Werner and created his friendship with Mike for a reason, and we all knew what was going on. Werner is just too naive and innocent to have a happy ending on this show, and they were definitely giving him too much screen time for his own good. Werner has book smarts, but not really any street smarts. He's the type of person who couldn't smoothly talk himself out of a situation if he tried, and also the type of person to get himself into trouble without even realizing it. Even though we knew going into this that Mike would probably have to end up killing him, up until the final moments that Werner started walking away, I was still hoping that they'd find a way to get him out of it. Sadly, in this universe, there's never an ending where everyone lives happily ever after. We've predicted for a few episodes now that Mike would have to kill him as he makes that difficult decision to no longer leave any half measures as he evolves into the ruthless killer that we know from Breaking Bad. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and jump back to the beginning of the episode as we go through and discuss the whole situation, eventually elaborating more on that final tragic moment. So the episode starts out with Mike chasing Werner down in order to bring him back. I originally thought that Werner would have headed to an airport, but apparently he escaped without his passport, so he ended up getting his wife to fly into America herself. Lalo gets himself involved when he sees Gus frantically leaving the place that he was snooping out, so he decides to follow. He sees Mike meet with Gus at the bank, so then he decides to follow Mike now. Although Mike was actually able to lose Lalo in the parking lot, he was still able to find out where Werner went by going back to the bank branch and forcing his way into seeing the same security footage that Mike did, putting two and two together and then calling the resort and asking for Werner himself. Now, I'm planning on doing a Lalo season 5 prediction video, especially since we've just been introduced to Lalo Salamanca, even though he's been hyped up since the beginning of the season, what the heck. Now, since Mike didn't want to alert Werner, he called the resort to make sure he was there, but he decided to surprise him by showing up in person. Lalo, on the other hand, obviously just wanted to cut to the chase, so he calls the resort directly asking for Werner. Now, although Mike was eventually able to find Werner, he wasn't able to stop Lalo from from persuading Werner into giving out information by pretending to be an associate calling on the behalf of Gus Fring. Mike would always stick his neck out for Werner and vouch for him to Gus because he knew that Werner meant well. But then when Mike found Werner and he tried explaining himself, Mike just didn't want to hear it at that point because he knew that Werner had been talking to the man that was following him earlier that day. When Mike ends up telling Gus about this, it must have been enough for Gus to decide that Werner was too dangerous to keep 
sleep around any longer. Mike knew that he had to tell Gus this because if he didn't, it would come around to bite him in the ass, but Mike said that he was certain that Vernon didn't say anything useful to Lalo, which I'm not so sure if that's true. At this point, Mike is definitely just trying to cover his ass, but Gus is a very cautious man, so this might have spooked him a little. Was the turning point that caused Gus to decide that Werner had to die really the fact that he talked to Lalo, or did Gus use Mike all along just to get Werner back so he could kill him? I initially thought that Gus wouldn't lie to Mike about that, but it is possible that he did because he could tell that Mike cared about Werner and that he wouldn't be as enthusiastic about finding Werner and bringing him back if he knew that he was just going to end up dead. When Gus tells Mike to wait where he is, Mike obviously knows what that implies and he tells Gus that he'd go another way about it. Gus says that he knows that much, but he says it in a way as if he's irritated and disappointed in Mike's judgement. Mike keeps arguing with Gus to spare Werner's life, but at this point Gus just cuts him off by saying that this conversation serves no purpose. Once Mike volunteered to take care of this himself, Werner's fate was decided and the phone call end. Although what was happening was clear as day, I just didn't want to accept it. I didn't want to feel sorry for Werner, but I'm about as disappointed in the situation as Mike is, and he's really being stuck between a rock and a hard place here. I was hoping that somehow maybe the vacuum cleaner man would be brought up by either Gus or Mike somehow, maybe that's the way that he originally comes into the story, but I guess not, and I couldn't think of any other solution to this situation. Mike wasn't going to disobey Gus, we know he becomes his loyal right hand man in Breaking Bad, and this story needs to eventually show how Mike is going to be forced to start killing people, eventually becoming jaded to it. What's so messed up though is that even after Mike tells Werner to get out of the car, he still believes that there's a chance for him to convince Mike to bring him back to his wife. Once Mike starts acting stern with him, I guess, he pleads to just go home once he realized that Mike is serious, but it's definitely past that point, even though Vernon says that he'd be okay without getting any money. It's not about the money, and although Mike knows that Werner means well, as he said, it was never his decision, and it's not like Werner's gonna ever convince Gus of any anything himself. Mike still feels strongly against innocent people getting killed due to the game because of how his son died, and he showed multiple times since in situations such as the story about Anita's missing husband when he went hiking and disappeared, along with that innocent civilian that Mike went and dug up to call in because he felt guilty about it. So at least Mike gives Werner enough information to deter his wife away from her unknowing demise, but that final phone call between Werner and his wife is just absolutely heartbreaking. Werner wanting nothing more than to see his wife to the point that he naively got himself killed over it. He couldn't stop thinking about her and talking to her over the phone just wasn't enough, I guess. She wired him money, flew all the way across the world, had just landed, was in the process of renting a car to be on her way to the resort when Werner, her husband, who she hasn't seen in a very long time, angrily and frantically calls her rudely cancelling their makeshift honeymoon, demanding that she goes home. They get mad at each other and he actually yells at her, which really kinda shook me because she thinks that all he cares about is his work, when that couldn't be further from the truth, but he can't let her know that if he wants her to go home. When she raises suspicion to the point that him saying that he's needed for his work isn't enough, he goes as far as to say that he never even wanted to see her and that she needs to go home. This was truly heartbreaking to know that the last time that Werner talked to his wife, she was told by him that he didn't even want to see her confirming her false suspicions that Werner cared more about his work than her, even though that's not true at all, and that was all in her head. It's just so bittersweet knowing that Werner's wife will most likely hold a resentment against him for this, never knowing that he literally just saved her life. Werner did the right thing getting her to go home, but he will be remembered negatively for it by the one person that matters to him. Although Werner is a screw-up, he does so without even realizing it. He messes up without even realizing that he's doing it, let alone realizing the ramifications that he's causing as he puts Gus's secret project in jeopardy. He was flown into the country and then driven to a different state with a bag over his head, brought into a laundry warehouse not knowing where it is in the world, brought down to the basement, was told to build 
build a secret lab in there and then was housed in a warehouse with constant security never allowed to see the outside. I don't know how he didn't think this was serious, but apparently it just went right over his head. It's just so tragic how Werner doesn't even fully realize the entire consequences of his actions. Mike knows that Werner is a good person with good intentions and Mike doesn't want anyone innocent to die, let alone be the cause of it. But sadly, Mike's friendship with Werner affected his proper judgement of the situation and Gus could easily tell. Every time that Mike vouched for Werner, Gus gave him a chance until it was too late. Gus could tell that Mike was being affected by his friendship with Werner and eventually Mike realized that in order to prove himself to Gus, he needed to clean his mess up all on his own, so to speak. In order for Mike to prove to Gus that in the end he can take matters into his own hands and fix the problem no matter what, Mike realized that he needed to do this on his own, especially since he'd rather get it done in the quickest and most peaceful way possible by someone that Werner knew instead of waiting for Victor and Tyrus to drive out there and ruthlessly take care of Werner themselves. Werner's just too naive for his own good, and he was sadly never going to survive working for people like Gus, he was just way in over his head. Everything goes over his head to the point that it even took him a minute to fully look around and realize why he's been brought out to the middle of nowhere. But in these final moments, Werner became surprisingly accepting of his fate, especially considering that he thought he could clumsily talk his way out of it. It's almost like he had an understanding between Mike and him where he understood that Mike was only doing his job, but it's hard to not take it personally. Mike obviously didn't want to go through with it, but he needed to in order to prove himself for Gus. And so they started walking into the darkness, Mike readies his gun, the camera zooms out to that wide shot of both their silhouettes, and we see Mike put one in the back of Werner's head. This shot was beautifully done, and the tension was perfect, it felt quiet, dark, and cold as it most likely should. When Mike returns to Gus for his final scene in the season, he's at a loss for words, but Gus can tell that Mike got the job done. So does this mean that Gus will trust Mike fully again? How will Mike act differently going into Season 5? Will he completely switch over to the ruthless kill mode that we see him switch on in Breaking Bad? Maybe there will be a time skip between Season 4 and 5 and by the time we see him in Season 5, he's just already jaded to everything? Or will he maybe just continue to slowly evolve as he becomes jaded to killing more and more people as we see it happen? I believe that as Mike learns to become more cautious than ever before, he slowly understands that, sadly, sometimes killing someone is the only way that you can prevent others from being hurt down the road as well, along with screwing yourself over in the long run. I'm excited to see Mike's evolution into Season 5, and I wonder if Gus will have them help out with the Lalo situation. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down below, along with giving me suggestions for future video topics, but that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, as it really helps me out more than you can imagine. Feel free to subscribe for more Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad content in the near future. And if you'd like to take that extra step in helping support the channel, consider checking out the Patreon as well. Follow me on Twitter too, link to both of those in the description. I'm fairly active on Twitter even when I'm not posting videos and I'm always retweeting everything I can involving both the Better Call Saul and Walking Dead universe. But anyways guys, as always, I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out!